DPI is a subject that confuses a lot of people. It doesn't help that the term is so often misused on the internet. Today, we'll learn exactly how DPI works. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about how DPI works in the Affinity programs. Now DPI is one of the most misunderstood concepts in all of digital design and printing. There's a lot of misinformation out there about this topic. So I really wanna make this video to explain DPI from the ground up. And when this video is over, you'll understand exactly how DPI relates to your designs. So first, let's talk about what DPI is and is not. DPI stands for dots per inch. And what this means, the only thing it means, is how closely a printer can print dots in a straight line on a physical object. So if a printer supports 300 DPI, it can print 300 dots in a one inch line. So let's look at this example of a t-shirt here, which is a very common thing for people to print on these days. If I zoomed in, a printer that supports 300 DPI would be able to print 300 dots in a one inch line here. I'll zoom in a little bit more. So here you see 300 dots in a one inch line. Now for clarity, I made individual dots here. In real life, the dots would slightly bleed into each other to give a continuous effect. The lines can be printed horizontally and vertically. So here I have a one inch square and each row is 300 dots wide and 300 dots tall. So we have a total of 90,000 dots here. I'll zoom in a little bit. This is an approximation of what it would look like. And if the dots were printed with different colors, we could create an image. Now, once again, the colors would bleed into each other a little bit, but this gives you an idea of what's happening. Most t-shirts and other products will have a defined print area. So for example, the print area of this t-shirt might be 10 inches by 12 inches. Now, if the printer supported 300 dots per inch, that means we could have 3000 dots across and 3600 dots up and down. This is because 10 inches times 300 dots per inch equals 3000 and 12 inches times 300 dots per inch equals 3600. So DPI is about printing on objects in the real world. It is based on how hardware printers work. A printer is going to have a defined range of DPIs it supports. We can't just make our printer arbitrarily print 1000 DPI if we want. It's going to be limited by the hardware specifications of the device. Typically 300 DPI is going to be good enough for objects that we hold at arm's length. Think of t-shirts, book covers, magazines, other reading material. 150 DPI is good for objects that are gonna be across the room from us. Often this includes tapestries, blankets, and banners. Large objects like billboards might even go as low as 30 DPI. When you're viewing something really big like that from a block away, high detail printing is just a waste because people won't even see the details. We'll return to DPI in a bit. Now let's talk about the world of digital images. These include popular formats like JPEG and PNG. Often we call these raster or bitmap files. I'll talk about vectors at the end of this video. Digital images like this have a resolution, which is a width and height in pixels. A pixel is a little rectangle of color that makes up your image. So this image is 2,333 pixels on each side. So if I zoomed in here, if I counted all these squares across, it would be 2,333. Let me create a new document and I'll make it really small. I'll just make it six by eight pixels. I'll click create. And this image is only gonna be six pixels wide by eight pixels tall. I'll select my brush here and I can paint in my image. I'll select different colors. And no matter what, I have to fit into these pixels here six across and eight up and down. So that's the resolution of this image here. Very small image, of course. Now, like I said, in Infinity, I selected the hand here so I could see the resolution of my image. Whatever program you're using, I strongly recommend you learn how to find the resolution of the image you're working with. If you don't know the image resolution, you're going to be flying blind when it comes to the quality of your image, especially if you wanna print it out in the real world. Now, what is image quality? Well, I have the same image here, and what I did is I shrunk it down to smaller and smaller sizes. I know you can't see the small ones. Let me resize them so they're all visible. So I zoomed in so you can see what these images look like here. Now on the left, we have the original image, which is 2,333 pixels on a side. I shrunk it down by a factor of 10 to get this image over here on the right. It's only 233 pixels on a side. Already you can see that less pixels is causing less detail. So if you look at the eyes here, look how pixelated it is compared to the original eyes. As we move over, it gets worse. So now we have 93 by 93 pixels. 46 by 46 is even lower quality. And finally, 23 by 23, you can barely even tell it's a cat anymore. So in general, the more pixels you have covering your subject, the higher quality the image is going to be. However, we have to be very careful where these pixels come from. Here I have my cat image that's 46 by 46 pixels. The quality is obviously very bad. So can I make it better? 
Well, let's add more pixels. I'm back in Affinity Photo here. If I want to resize my document, I can do that with the document menu option up here. There's two options, resize canvas and resize document. Let me show you what resize canvas does. If I select resize canvas, I'll make it 20 times bigger. And I'll click resize. That makes my canvas bigger, but it doesn't actually resize the content in it. Let me undo that. Instead, I'll choose resize document. So I'll go to document, resize document. So let's make it 10 times bigger now. And I'll just multiply by 10. A shortcut is you can just type star 10, and then tab, that'll multiply both sides by 10. And then I'll click resize. Now, if I look at my document here, it's bigger, but the quality didn't increase. Looking at my image here, you can see the pixels that make it up. But actually, if we zoom in, notice how each of these squares is now just 10 pixels on a side. So all it did when we resized our image by 10 is it just copied each pixel 10 times. So we didn't actually gain any quality. Now that example may have been obvious to you, but let me do it with a high quality image too. So I'll do document, resize document, and let's make it twice as big. And I'll click resize. Now the untrained eye may say, hey, this still looks pretty good. Maybe we got some quality. But if we zoom in, once again, you'll notice the same problem. So we doubled the size of our image, but it just doubled each pixel. It didn't add any new information. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make with images at this size. They double the size to fit some requirement, but they didn't actually add any new information to their image. Now I will say there are some smarter ways to resize your document. If you go to document, resize document, there are different algorithms here that can give you a little bit better result. But really all they just do is smooth the transition between pixels and you're not really adding any new information or quality to your image. Now there are some AI based upscaling tools online that are really good for this. And they genuinely do work by trying to add more authentic details to your images. I'll talk more about that in a future video. But for the most part, resizing algorithms aren't going to add any quality to your image. So all this is to say is that the quality of your image is ultimately determined by resolution. But if you're just duplicating existing pixels, you're not really adding any quality to your image, even if it says it's a higher resolution. So I went through that whole section and I didn't even mention DPI. Why is that? Because images don't have DPI. There's no special setting called DPI that adds quality to our image. The only thing we care about is the resolution of our image in pixels, assuming you didn't artificially make your image bigger. Now I know DPI is used all over the place in software programs, including Affinity. It even made an appearance on the resize document tool over here. We'll look at how that can be used later. But first let's talk about how we can bridge this gap between digital image resolution and DPI on physical products. I talked about how DPI is just dots on a physical surface. And then we saw how digital images are just a bunch of colored rectangles called pixels. How can we translate pixels to DPI? Well, it really depends on how big we want to print our image. The easiest thing to do is just print a pixel on each dot. And that's exactly what we can do. Let's go back to our t-shirt example here. I have this image here that's 3000 pixels wide by 3600 pixels tall. And remember our shirt has a print area of 10 inches by 12 inches that supports 300 DPI. So we can print 3000 dots horizontally and we can print 3600 dots up and down. So what this means is that when I print this image, I can get exactly 300 dots per inch because each pixel maps to a dot. So if I printed my image over here, the quality level of the output would be at 300 DPI. Now remember the image itself doesn't have dots, but for each dot I want to print, I'm able to get one pixel of data and put it in my output. It's important to understand that this image itself does not have a DPI. We can only talk about the DPI if we know how big we want to print it. I conveniently made this image a very specific size. You'll notice the pixels and the dots match. Let's look at a more realistic example. So in this example, the image resolution is different. It's 1500 pixels wide by 1800 pixels tall. So the question is, can we print it at 300 DPI quality? And the answer is yes. And if you understand this part, you'll understand how DPI works. We don't have enough pixel data to cover this whole area, but if I print in a five inch by six inch area, I can achieve 300 DPI. That's because for this smaller area, it's 1500 dots wide by 1800 dots tall. So my image would perfectly map in there. So even though the image is smaller, we can print it at 300 DPI, but we have to print it smaller. So the next question is what would happen if we took this image and we stretched it to fill this whole area? Well, in this case, we'd get 150 DPI quality. The printer will still print 300 dots per inch, but because we needed to double the size of our image, we're actually just doubling the pixels. So we didn't really give it any new pixel data. What we're doing in this case is the same thing we did with the cat image when we doubled the size of the document. When we zoom in, notice how each patch of color is just duplicated pixels. So when we have an image, it does not have a DPI. Rather, we have to consider what size it will be printed at, and then we can determine its DPI. 
So let's do a little quiz here. I have some images with a resolution. Let's say I want to print them at 300 DPI. What size can I print these images at? So let's look at this first one, 2700 by 2400 pixels. Well, I can print it at nine inches by eight inches. That's because 2700 divided by 300 is nine and 2400 divided by 300 is eight. Let's look at this next example, 6,000 pixels on a side. How big could I print this to maintain 300 DPI? Well, I could print it at 20 inches by 20 inches because 6,000 divided by 300 is 20. And let's look at this last one, 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels. This can support 300 DPI if we print it at 15 inches by 18 inches. So whenever someone asks you, what is an image's DPI? Your answer should be, it depends on what the image's resolution is and how big you want to print it. So if DPI isn't part of an image, why is it used so often in programs and apps? Well, there are some situations where DPI can help us make calculations. So I'm here in Affinity Photo again, and let's look at the interface for creating a new document. I'll go to File, New, and no matter what I do, my document is going to be created in pixels. However, for convenience, I can choose other options here, such as inches. So let's make it 15 inches wide and 17 inches tall. And I'll set the DPI to 300. And then I'll click Create. Now, if we look at my document over here, you can see it's 4,500 by 5,100 pixels in size. Affinity Photo still created my document in pixels. But what it did is it multiplied the inches by the DPI to give me this size here. My image still technically does not have a DPI. This menu says inches and DPI, but really it's just there for our convenience. It's going to automatically calculate the pixels for us. Now there's something here that really confuses people. If I specify pixels, let's say I want it to be 1200 by 1500, the DPI box is still here. So why is this box here and does it even matter? Well, it matters if you create your document and then you wanna start measuring things in inches. So I'll click create here. So our document is still 1200 by 1500. DPI had no effect on that. But let me draw a rectangle that perfectly covers my document. Just draw a rectangle here. Now with my rectangle selected, I can see the dimensions of it. And because I covered my whole document, it's 1200 pixels wide by 1500 tall. But let's say I wanna know how big I can print this image at 300 DPI. Well, I can click on the hand icon here and I can change the units to inches. So I'll select inches. Now I'll select my rectangle again and you can see it says four inches by five inches. That's because 1200 divided by 300 is four and 1500 divided by 300 is five. So it's showing me in inches how big this will be at 300 DPI. So let's do this again with a different DPI. So I'll do file, new. I'll do pixels, 1200 by 1500. And let's do 150 DPI. I'll type it in. I'll create the document. Let's create another rectangle. Let's give it a different color. Once again, the rectangle is 1200 by 1500 pixels, the same as before. Let me change the units in my document again. I'll click the hand. For units, I'll say inches. Now, if I select my rectangle, you can see it's eight inches by 10 inches. So the document is still the same exact size. But based on the DPI of the document, if I switch to an inches measurement, it's going to give me a different value. And because I only care about printing at 150 DPI, now it's telling me I can print bigger at eight inches by 10 inches. So DPI will help you make calculations in terms of inches, but really it's not gonna have any effect on the ultimate quality of your image. And this is why it's incorrect to declare that a digital image has a DPI of 300 or 150. The terms mean nothing unless you're specifying how big you're gonna print this image at. Let's look at another scenario where you may see DPI in Affinity Photo. I created this empty document here. It's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. I set the DPI to 300 when I created it. Let me paste an image in here that's smaller than the document. I'll do file, place, and I have this image of a sky, and I'll paste it in here. So we can see that when I paste an image in here, it's at 100% the size of the image. And with my image selected, I can see that by looking up over here. This image is 2070 by 1380, and here it says at 300 DPI, 100%. Now, if I make this image bigger, you'll see the percentage has increased and the DPI has decreased. This is because we're now duplicating pixels. So if we're trying to print out 300 DPI quality, we're gonna lose some of it with this image because we're duplicating pixels. Likewise, if I make the image smaller, it's going to show me a higher DPI. Now in reality, it's not gonna print at 817 DPI or whatever arbitrary value we have. The printer software is basically just gonna throw out pixels, but this DPI indicator up here and the size will give you a good indication of how your image will be transformed when it's printed. Now let's talk about vectors. 
I'm in Affinity Designer now, but these concepts apply to any vector program. Now, just like JPEGs and PNGs, vectors do not have a DPI. In fact, vectors don't even have a resolution. How is that even possible? Well, let's look at what makes a vector. Here I have this vector image of a butterfly. Now, if I select the butterfly and I select the node tool, these points are what make up our vector. And if I select one of these points, you can see the handles related to them. So unlike our raster images, which were a grid of pixels, a vector image is going to be these points and the angles of the curves coming out of them. When a vector program loads these points, it knows how to draw the shapes on the screen. So here we have this curve. The vector program knows that when I have this point here with this angle, and down here I have this point here with this angle, it knows how to draw the curve in between them. And because it's defined mathematically like that, we can zoom in with infinite resolution. So I'll keep zooming in here. So I'm zoomed in at 28,000%, and I still have a perfectly straight curve here, no pixelation. Now this is nice for showing an image on a screen, but what if we want to print out our image on a t-shirt? When using vectors, typically we'll export them to a PNG or JPEG, and then we'll use that image to print. So why don't we just start with PNGs and JPEGs to begin with? Well, there's a couple reasons. First, some designs are just more easily created and edited with vector shapes. With vectors, I have the easy ability to change my design. I can move things around like this. I can drag points to different places. But another benefit is that we can export to any resolution we want. This is really important with text. And yes, text is a type of vector. So I have this very simple text here I created. It's a vector-based Affinity Designer document. So I can export it at different resolutions based on my needs. So let's do that now. I'll go to File, Export. Let's say for my first example, I want the width to be 400 pixels by 81 pixels tall. So I'll export. I'll call this my low res image. Save it. Let's export another one at 6,000 pixels. So I'll do File, Export. Let's make this one 6,000 pixels wide. I'll call this high res. Now let's bring them into the same document and compare. I'll do File, Place. We can see the relative sizes here. Let me make the small one bigger. So you can see that with the same vector image, I was able to export a high resolution version and a low resolution version down here. And maybe for something small like a business card, this bottom one would be good enough. But then a more higher res situation, this top one would be used. So how does this relate to DPI? Well, it still means you need to understand how big you want your image to be printed in the real world. And the nice thing about vectors is that you can export to basically any size you want. Understanding DPI is crucial for printing your designs and also working with print on demand. If you still have any questions about DPI, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.